action yeah good morning everyone uh, we are starting to talk about object uh, modular programming and uh, uh, objects and things like that so that's what we are going to talk about today um, uh, any questions before we begin uh, the session I have a question Isabella um, so my github is attached to my visual studios i can see them both yeah, but when i tr don't use that <laughs> don't, don't do that no no don't use that use tortoise okay. git okay okay Un see let's get become familiarized with git completely with one tool and we all use it and you see me use it every day after you are comfortable with Git and you understand how things are working, then use this different types of tools to attach to it. You know what I mean? So my, okay. my recommendation is that for now, only use Tortoise Git. Then you learn to use command line. After not you mastered, you're comfortable with command line, then start using additional tools. Otherwise, because you don't know what the tool is doing behind the scene, you're going to get confused like heck. So it's better not to do it. And thank you very much for the question, by the way. All right. Thank it you. was a good one. <laughs> All right. So uh, anything else? Excuse me, sir. Yes. For the part two of the workshop. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to wait have for to... me. Okay. You have to wait for me and then do it. Okay, so you're going to see that. So what happens is that when you look at your repository, like when you look at your repository, on, let me just show it to you. So I have received many of your uh, repositories. I'm going to wait till Friday. Then I'm going to pull them all. I'm going to pull all your repositories and then I'm going to add my stuff and I'll do it. I'm going to say I'm going to type over that far that's changes. As soon as you go to the re open up your repository. Has anybody finished part one? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, yes. okay. So, yes. uh, so let me just go. Joey was the first to said, yes, let me find Joey's uh, request and I'm going to continue after that. So uh, Joey, do you mind if I uh, show your repository to everyone? Not at all. Okay, good. So I'm going to, uh, first I have to go to my email system and in my email, I got to go to uh, invites. Okay, I, I started, uh, as you see, I started kind of uh, putting them in order as we were going. Let me see if uh, Joey is not here. Probably I put it in here already. Mm. What is your ID, Joey? Uh, like my Seneca one? Oh, oh it was, uh, I used my ended up using my hotmail so i already had a get a github account so did you put it? your name did you set your profile uh yeah it should be joey so, walton so jo i'm trying to find joey Walton because if you set the prototype it's going to send with your name if you don't it's going to put like this the only the so i know that this person did not do the uh let me see jay huh okay so uh, I just saw his name. If you scroll up a bit on the other tab, um, your oh. Git invitations, I saw it like at the Did top. Did you at the top? Oh, yeah, there. Joey! Hey, sorry, I'm found. <laughs> I'm famous. Yes, you, you're found. So I'm gonna click on view invitation, and that view invitation is going to take me to this page in clear in here i'm going to click on accept invitation so in case you are collaborating with someone else and you have a shared uh workspace i encourage you to do that but make sure you don't violate plagiarism stuff so i would see that everything is in here uh oh uh, i have to stop the recording <laughs> you have your student number and everything over there man okay so uh to be fair yeah. you did tell us to do that <laughs> i know i did tell you to do that but i have to uh, uh stop the recording I'll, I'll edit it later on and, and wipe that place up okay so that's okay so i'm gonna I got, i'm gonna i'm gonna blur it later on okay so so now i know this is uh, uh joey's email address so i'm gonna copy over here then i'm gonna go to my uh op244 
student help and in here I'm going to create uh, a, rep um, uh, a directory and I'm going to call that this so I know that's joy right so then what I will do over here I'm going to clone this like that with SSH in there git clone okay close I open the works I open workshop zero and I'm gonna open this one the Visual Studio three years later when it opens four years later when it opens actually it's open already I think yeah so I'm gonna open the uh, uh, in uh, this one over here and I'm gonna say over here see out far that was here okay and in here I'm just gonna add something like something like I plus one and I'm gonna put a dash over here and run it to make sure it works so something is changed over there and uh, Joey is your name Fred Soleil also, you told us to do, copy yours exactly. Come on, seriously? The... Hey, <laughs> seriously, Joey Walton? Is it? Is it <laughs> yes, pronounced? It is. Did, did I? Did it, is it correct? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you okay. you pronounced it a okay. okay. Yeah, spelled it properly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. So now I am not afraid so anymore. And Joey Walton, by the way, if you have done if you have done that, please fix it. And and that's so like blindly copying. Please no. Please use your. Uh, common sense let's put it that way now that it's actually set I'm gonna close this down okay and now I'm gonna go in here I'm gonna right click and say commit now I'm gonna say over here for that changes okay I'm gonna click on commit and push and okay so now Joey will go uh, on uh, his website and it's gonna on his uh, repository site and do it like that and it would see that Fardad has Fardad's changes. As soon as you see this appeared, it as as soon as you see this pause appeared, because it heard like this appeared, this pause appeared, which means this is there, it means now it's your turn. You are going to clone this. Uh, sorry, you are going to go to your uh, repository and simply right click over here and say tortoise git pull. This is going to pull all the changes in your repository and after that what you need to do is to right click over here, click tortoise git and show log and then double click on the file I changed and take a screenshot of this one and send it to me so I know you found out. See, now it shows this was what Joey put over here, these are my changes. Actually, I fixed Fred Soleil to Walton. So practically, I showed you what happens when you have problem with your code. You put the status of your code, you push it in a repository, and you say, Farda, that need help with Workshop 9. I'm going to pull your repository, go to Workshop 9 in your repository, in the works repository, take it out in front of you, fix it, add it, uh, push it so when you pull you can actually see exactly what changes was made to your application that made it work correctly. Do we understand how this happened? All right, instead of yes or no, true or false was faster. <laughs> okay, so good. So now, and that's that's the end of it, okay? So that's the end of it, and uh, that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna uh, blur that thing. That yeah, uh, uh, take the uh, uh, student number stuff out, and uh, then I'm gonna post the video. So this one I cannot post the um, I cannot post the the recording for it. I have to uh, uh, post uh, the. Um, the YouTube video for it. So I'm going to take Joey over here and put it in 244 and in 244 I'm going to create new folder and in here I'm going to say changed so I know that Joey is changed. Where is Joey? Joey, Joey, Joey. 
by from that's easier Joey Walton and I'm gonna put that one in change so I know I change it I don't have to do it again okay uh, so that's that that's how it's gonna happen and like that you're gonna all have your repositories uh, to work with uh, are we okay with uh, are we okay with this all right so that's the process and Sujan, you said no why what's up I prob uh, could you see my like if I uh, mention my username properly or not in GitHub like you just made a comment about it uh, like when you were scrolling through your emails it doesn't matter if your username is correct or not as long as, as, long as in your readme file you have your Seneca email over there set properly with your section and all the stuff then you're yeah, fine. okay yeah okay it doesn't okay. matter the reason that I told Joey that if you have set your name properly or not, and for example, this person did not, is that this is useless because if somebody Googles this name, they won't be able to find this person. The GitHub will not come up. The GitHub uh, account yeah. will not come up. You have to go to profile and put your real name in the profile. Yeah, for, for me, like my name was very common, so like I couldn't like. Uh, it, it, my name was already just so I just like use my <laughs> uh, believe me it's so what they do you're gonna say I worked on this project in github or something like that in your resume they put your name they put your name they put your uh, I think uh, Kuljit you have your uh, your microphone on there we go so yeah so they put your name they put the thing you put on your resume and that's an exact match to your github it's gonna bring it up trust me yeah, okay. Even okay. if your okay. name is the commonest name of common names everywhere, usually people like that they should select the nickname. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, and you. and you put your nickname over there. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be legal name, as long as it's a recognizable name. Yeah. I'm okay. just Thank I'm you, just bro. helping you to be visible on internet. That's all. Okay. Okay. All Thank right? you, professor. No problem. All right. So. Also, excuse me. Yes. Uh. I make something to my readme file to add the session okay. and I make the commit man, but I didn't see the change on GitHub. I don't know. If it means you didn't me. push. You just committed. Remember, commit commits the change to your computer. But remember okay. that you have cloned your repository on GitHub. So you have to push the changes up to GitHub for everything to get synced. Remember. Two steps are needed. Commit, then push. Otherwise, your GitHub account is not going to get updated. I am happy that all these questions are going to happen because you are, without knowing, you are getting familiarized with Git. And also, Professor, like, what's the difference between GitHub and GitLab? Oh, GitLab is a fork of GitHub. Okay. You know what is a fork? It's fork a clone. Like it's, a... it's a clone. It means another company because GitHub is open source. Another company who saw the idea of GitHub is good and they saw Microsoft bought GitHub and from that open thing went to Microsoft's policy, they created GitLab. Oh, okay. So GitLab oh, wow. is another type of GitHub. If you learn to work with GitHub, you're gonna learn to work with GitLab. Potatoes, potatoes. Oh, okay, thank you. All right, all right, anything else? I love these questions, man. We are actually, I'm getting some professional, uh, nice questions happening in, in OOP244 already, and that's beautiful. All right. Shall we begin, everyone? So, excuse me again. No I, problem again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, when you click into a folder, you have the option to push, to pull, with Todoy's Git, but when you are you right click on uh, Readmify, you don't have this option. At least me, no, I don't you, have. You don't. You to... don't push the file. I you, mean, pull. you push the repository. You go back up and push the entire repository. You can do the file oh, too. Oh, the and, entire. Okay. And okay. and and, and, the, and Git will automatically find out which one is what. Don't worry. That's Git is very intelligent. 
it knows what is changed and only applies the changes and one thing that I forgot to mention in those videos that uh, this is extremely important I want you to put this in your reflection first of all I see many people are in here uh, listen only listen only people I don't want you I want you to connect with your microphone please I don't want listen only in my class please with microphone if you don't have a microphone go buy from dollar store it's like five bucks okay get a microphone get connected with audio please okay I don't want if listen if you are here only to listen then just get off the class and listen to the recording the recording is gonna be up okay I do not want rec listen only people in class please this is very important anyways so as I was saying uh, I see train of thought went went away when I saw the listen only people. Uh, what was I talking about? <laughs> put it in our reflection, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. in your reflection. But it's, it's something extremely important about Git that I let let that I need you to know. When you uh, commit, like the like when you are committed to something in English, what does it mean? It means you're gonna take care of it. It's committed to you. When you commit. A file to git git will always observe it like a big brother or big like 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 a mother over there and takes a look at your file and make sure your file stays at, as as safe as it is and if any changes are happening it keeps track of all the changes therefore when you commit a file to git you cannot delete it with Windows or Linux if you want to delete it you have to delete it with git and then if anything remains then you delete with windows so for example let me show you my own repository that i had for f solima so if i go over here in this thing where is it where is it student help the, um, no that's last semester no, this semester student last student help so f solima is what i created so if i come over here and say i want to delete this and take it off I cannot use the delete for Windows because git is gonna bring it back this is git is gonna say oh something is gone you committed it to me I'm gonna bring it back if you want to delete it you have to delete it with tortoise git if you want to keep the local copy you can but if you don't want to then you do delete it with git which means delete will uncommit it from git and delete it from the repository and then the same thing over here when you and um, let's say I want to rename something in here. Say I want to rename prog.cpp to program.cpp. You cannot rename it with Windows. If you rename it with Windows, Git thinks it's deleted and it's going to bring prg.cpp back. So you have to rename it with Git. So you have to say rename and you say program.cpp and then you click on OK. And now, as you see, it is changed completely. Now, when I actually commit, I have to say over here, changed to program.cpp, and I'm going to commit, and I'm going to push. Now, everything's going to be changed properly, and it's set. Oh, I have to pull first because I changed something over there. Uh, so, oh, I deleted my repository. Sorry. <laughs> uh, my apologies. Uh, I, I, this, uh, this was done before, uh, so I, the, the, the repository was deleted because of all the tests that I was doing. So let me just wipe everything up, delete everything. But anyways, that's how it's done. Uh, because I demoed a few things, I deleted my account 50 times and recreated it, and that's what it is. Anyway, so that's what I was saying. Renaming and deleting must be done with Git if a file is committed to Git, not with Windows. Do we understand this? All right, so I'm going to actually have this thing in the first quiz that is coming. Actually, let me just put something in here so I know the quiz tests. File deletion. Can I ask you something? With Git. You can always say something you never need to ask. Okay. Uh, if I want to change the place of the folder, how can I do it? First, you delete it, but you keep the local. Not that delete. But like, if I want to change the, the uh, directory of the folder. You, you mean the whole repository or? Yes, yes. So the whole repository doesn't matter. Like the whole repository, you can move it everywhere you want. Okay, thank you. The, the whole repository as a whole. But if I want to create, I'm not going to, 
Joey, I'm not going to change your reply. Say, don't worry. But let's say in here, I want to create something like workshops. Okay, workshops. I want to create a folder workshops, workshops, and I want to move this workshop in here to that one. This is not a repository. This is a directory. If that's the case, I have to right click and go toward this git. Keep local deleted. So I, it's got to get deleted and it's kept as local. Then whatever is remained, I move it to workshops and I commit again. So you delete and you move. Okay. But Understood. entire repository, absolutely no problem. You can always move it anywhere you want with no problem. So if I wanted this workshops to go somewhere else, I can just simply say cut and put it somewhere else. Easy. Okay. Thank you so much. No problem. All right. So. Let the games begin. Um, so uh, what I want to do first is uh, talk about object orientation very quickly to see what object orientation is, what we want to learn. And then uh, I'm going to bring up and write some code and you're going to see how everything's going to happen. So um, down to this point, when you were actually writing code, what you were writing was something like this. So essentially, when you wrote code, all your all the code you have written was actually you know what let me um, uh, create a project and we'll start okay so I'm gonna start Visual Studio and I'm gonna create a local project and the local project is going to be uh, in the repository on GitHub so you will see it so I'm gonna go next and in here I'm gonna select the OOP 244 and in here and a B D notes which section we are in we are in section we are in section B now so I'm gonna go to NBB and in, I'm gonna select that folder so that's the folder it's gonna go in project name is gonna be today's date which is 01 or I'm gonna call it January 13th okay so January 13th notes and it's gonna be one dash uh, I'm gonna put zero one dash January 13th so you know that this is the note these are the notes for today I'm gonna place the solution and project in the same directory remember you're gonna always want to have this checked because we are not in a situation to have 50 projects in one solution we have a solution and project at the same so that's what you're gonna do so I'm gonna click on create that's gonna create uh, the solution for uh, for today now in here I'm going to add new item it's going to be a C++ item in here I'm going to say prg.cpp oh sorry 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 cancel cancel uh, C++ file prg.cpp and the pro it's created so in here I'm going to say include io stream stream and I'm going to uh, say using namespace std for now blindly follow uh, what I'm doing. And as we are going, we're going to understand how things are in C++. This is one of the most important things uh, to most important things to know when you are learning something. First, you copy, then you understand what have you copied. Therefore, you learn. Okay. This is important. So when I say just do this for now, I'll explain later. Just do that. Don't try to investigate and see what it is. That's just going to confuse the heck out of you. Okay. Remember that. Okay. So now in here, I'm going to say int main return zero. And in here, I'm going to say see out hello OOP 244 NBB. Welcome. And I'm going to go to new line. I'm going to control F5, press control F5 to run it. It runs, it compiles, everything's good. Let's say I want to actually give this to you guys to see uh, what it is. First of all, I'm going to save it as new name. So we know I'm going to say 01 and I'm going to call it welcome.cpp. Come.cpp. Okay, so welcome.cpp is saved right now. I'm going to go to your repository, the one that I am teaching with right now, and I'm going to keep it open. So I'm going to right click over here because I added new stuff. I'm going to say Tortoise Git add 
that's going to add all the files that I have. As you see, it's prg.cpp. That's welcome. These are the solution files. And everything else is ignored. Why? Because I have .git ignore over there. I'm telling to git what to ignore. I'm going to click on OK. And then I'm going to then I'm going to commit and I'm going to say over here, welcome, commit, push, and OK. And now, oh, I have to first pull first because I changed. If you see it's, it doesn't accept, it means something has changed over there and you forgot to pull. I'm going to pull that first and then push it again. Now it's going to push it and it's gone because I changed something in readme file over there. It's, it's, gonna, it's telling me, hey, you are pushing something over there, but you didn't pull before. So you have to first pull, make sure all changes are current, and then you push. It is always wise to, if you are in multi-user uh, or collaborative work, it all, always first pull and then push to make sure you and then start working and push so your your so you your changes are applied to your repository before you do anything it makes the uh, synchronization easier so anyways so now that we are done with this if i actually go to the website of oop244 Notes. Hi, sir, I have a question. Give me two seconds. If I go to there and I look at NBB, you'll see that it's there and you see the welcome is over there so you can actually go and find out how I did things. Now I'm ready for your question. So if you try to push a file that you've edited and let's say you have to pull and the file over there has been edited as well, it's, uh, does it's that a, override? No. If, if there, Git tries to put it integrate it properly together, okay? If it can't, it's going to tell you it's a conflict. So you click on conflict, the same thing that you are taking a snapshot for me is going to come up, showing you what are the differences. Then you're going to say, I want this part, this part, this part, this part. Then you say merge. It puts them together. So if it ah, cannot okay. handle it itself, it tells you I cannot handle it. There's a conflict. What are you going to do about it? Then you open it up. It shows you the exact same thing. You're going to say, oh, there we go. So I put this one added and I forgot to do. So you say, I want this one from right screen, this one from left, this one from right, this one from left. Then you say save. As you, soon as you save, it's changed. Uh, the merge is done. You commit, you push, and you're done. Okay? Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. But in our situation, if you are in such case that you see things are not happening properly, just copy your repository somewhere else. OK, if you see it's, it cannot do it, copy the whole repository in some temp directory, b clone the repository that you have from, out, from, from the web, from the server, then bring the files that you change and overwrite the files and you're done and then delete the old one. So the conflict is solved, but it's not going to happen much. If it happens, sh show me and I'll tell you how it how it works out. OK, we are not the you are not really collaborating on GitHub that much. What you are doing, you're using it as a Dropbox or a memory stick. For now, I want to just be limited to that. I don't want to show you the whole uh, hoopla of Git. I want you to just tell you how to use it slightly. And then as you're going forward, you're going to learn to do more stuff. But in the notes over there, I have something. It's called a Pro Git book. So if, when you are actually downloading Git, there is something over there called Pro Git Book, just to make everything clear and nice. So if you say download, Git download, oh, for some reason it went to some Greek thing. Okay, Git, <laughs> Git, da Git download. If you go over there to downloads, in here you see it says <clears throat> Pro Git Book. It's a free online book. Go over there, read chapters 1, 2, and 6, and you're good to go. Okay? 1, 2, and 6. And it's not much. So 1 and 2 is simply tells you what are the basic commands of Git, which is too much for you. You know that you're happy. And then after that, you can go take a look at GitHub and see what happens. So essentially, when you read this, you'll find out what are those GUI pull and push that you're doing, what commands are actually issued. So it's a good idea to do that.
Are we okay with this? All right. <clears throat> and all these things are going to be on the thing. So where can I find the pro git open book? Okay, these are going to be all in the quiz, so I'll see how well you actually go through all the stuff. Anyways, <clears throat> okay, so that's that. So let's uh, go back to here, and that's that. So that's how it's going to happen, and every time I add something, I give it a new name, and it's going to be all over there as uh, we know. So when you actually wrote programs before, the programs you have written were something like this, if you write a very good C program. So what happens is that you are going to have lots of functions created, you have a structure at the top, some global pointers over there, some defined variables to define some values, and then you use your functions that you have written to write a program to do something somewhere and uh, essentially what happens is that say over here let me just actually add a resource file add a new item utility text file and in here i'm going to call it items.com separated value and so these are the things i have so yeah, so you have a program like this, and in your program, your program runs, functions are called in main, your program runs, and you can list the items, you can search for an item, so I want to search for something fresh, and it's going to say uh, fresh fish is this much, so a program runs like this, and you have some functions, uh, you have a main that calls the functions, and each function does its job, and the program works. This is what we learned to do in C language. Are we okay with this? <clears throat> so, how we are going to change things in C++. When you are looking at thing, you this in here, you see what you see over here is actually like if I actually read this, take a look at this. I have keyboard flush, get string, get integer, get double, get limited integer, get limited double, yes function, print titles, print item row, print items, and so on and so forth. So when you look at these only, what is your guess that the program is about? Like how, what can you guess about the program? Um, so when you see this, what do you think the program is? If you do not, if you haven't seen the, the, uh, the execution of the program, what could it be? You don't see what the program is, and you don't see the item, you just see the functions. As you see, Generate an item list. There you go. See, item sorter, listing inventory. So, as you see, generate, I see, I love the answers that you said. Just, just take a look at it. I'm good. I'm, that's enough. You don't need to. But take a, take a look at the poll right now and, and see what it is. Take a look at the, the values that I have. Anything over there about a grocery store? None of them reading from a source, printout, none of them said inventory list was, was the closest thing that you have. None of them talked about anything about a grocery store's item list that you're going to have. And this is exactly what it is. If you actually run the program, you will see that the items are actually items in a grocery store. So my program in here from what we have seen did not tell you what is this thing about why because it's a functional program it's a program that is based on functionality not the actual thing so if i told you something is reading a sentence you can hear a sentence coming so like i'm gonna say uh uh, say the news. So if I have a function called say the news, what do you get out of this function? Okay, a news is going to be said to me. 
but who is it a news program is it a person saying is it radio is it tv i just know something is coming up that's why it's not descriptive enough for us a functional programming a structured program as you see over here tells you what is the structure of the application it does not explain to you though how the application is what is involved in here who are the actors of this application who's involved with this application nothing comes in through but what happens in real life when you're actually hearing news when you hear news what are the options like your friend comes to you you're sitting over there having a beer and it says have you heard the news they said that this and that happened so say the news happened from your use from your friends gossiping or telling the news or something like that or you're sitting in front of the tv you turn on the news a uh, 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 a news reporter over there is saying the news so you know what the story is that's what happens in real life in real life whatever happens you know what caused it that's what a world with actors and objects do i want to give you um and, and turn on your microphone i want you to talk about this let's say it's three o'clock in the morning okay and you hear a voice saying wake up okay and you open your eyes and no one is there what you gonna do like seriously what you gonna do acknowledge that ghosts are real or that I am about yeah, to be yeah, probably you're gonna wet your pants you hear wake up you wake up at three o'clock in the morning and no one's there wake up no one's there pitch black no one's there and could be a dream could you be a sleeping. dream but you were awake and you hear wake up again and then what and you hear wake up again and you look around nothing is there get the hell out of the house yes there's, exactly there's nothing you're, you're gonna, gonna be there. run with your with your pajamas out in the street in 14 degrees below zero of, of, of thing why because you had a function with no owner but if you hear wake up and you wake up you see your little sister over there says i'm scared can you come sleep with me then there is absolutely no fear is feeling of joy of love you go with your sister you tuck her you put her in bed and life is beautiful so an object-oriented world every single action that is happening has an owner and that owner relies to you what happened therefore you can identify what's going on do we understand what just happened It's like context gives meaning to something. There's yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, that's what it is. That's that's what it is. And that's what an object-oriented world is. An object-oriented world, you have objects that you interact with, and you are one of the objects in the world, an actor in those environments that's doing something. So first of all, and 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 if you look at me. Like you're looking at me right now on a, on a monitor. You can see me, right? Can you see me on the monitor? Can you see my face right now? Okay. If I told you, how do you like my hairstyle? What's going to be your, what's going to be your <laughs> response to that? How Where are you bald? I love it. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's, it's bald. Yeah. I don't have any Pretty hair good. to have a style. So you look at my property and you'll see there is no hair so hairstyle really what are you talking about okay so you can actually look at my action take a look at my property whatever that you can see and then you can respond to it but if i if i told you what do you think what do you think i'm thinking about right now what do you guess i'm thinking about right now your answer will be i don't know because it's a private property, it's in your brain. You're thinking, I don't know, you have to tell it to me. For me to convey to you what is happening in my thought is my responsibility to give it to you if I choose to. Another example for it.
you are going out with your best friend or not best friend let's put it this way you're going to the cafeteria when the pandemic over in seneca we are sitting over there and uh <clears throat> we want to have a coffee and talk about object orientation and you sit over there and you look at me and you're saying okay um let's have a coffee and i'm gonna say okay so we go to the lineup of tim hortons and i go like this oh i forgot to bring my wallet and i say can i borrow a couple of do dollars to get a coffee and i'm going to give it back to you later probably you would do that because i'm your teacher and you want to look good so and you want to look generous and maybe you were on your final i'm going to give you a couple of marks you're going to give me the two dollars right are you going to give me the two dollars seriously are you yeah you are but now <laughs> <laughs> I love the nose, but it's okay. It's your choice. Okay. But anyways, I can ask you and you know, give, you're going to give me the $2. And that's beautiful. Thank you very much. So most of you actually said yes. Okay. But just imagine for all those people who said yes. Okay. Just imagine that we are standing in a lineup of Tim Hortons and I do like this and I say, oh, I don't have my wallet with me. And I take my hand, put it in your pocket and start looking for a toonie then what is going to be your response? Seriously. No. What, what is this? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're going to slap me in the face. So, so what the heck are you doing? Get your half hand off me. No touch, no touch, right? That's what object-oriented world is. You might have a toonie, and you might as well very are, are very pro giving it to me as a loan so I can actually give it to you later. But me taking my hand in your pocket and getting it is wrong. That's what you are doing in C language. You are creating a structure. In your structure, you are creating five fields, integer age, integer uh, student number, and I don't know, character name. And then you put your hand inside the structure and change the name without asking permission from the structure. That structure has no control over its property that's not object oriented you need to be able to make things in your program to prevent access because you're not supposed to do it to have an organized world to make sure everything is good and even just let's think that i take my hand in your pocket and take the two dollars and you will not notice then what's going to happen to you when you actually put your hand in your pocket and want to pick the $2? It's gone. And you don't know how. You're confused. I swear I had $2 in my pocket. What happened? That means the privacy is gone. It means it's a workable chaos where everybody can pick something without everybody knowing. Do you understand? Do you understand the need for privacy? Perfect. <clears throat> and these are the things. So first of all, we need to be able to, first of all, down to what we, what we learned from now, we need to be able to put the specifications, the attributes of a thing with its own features together. So each object is responsible of its own property. Okay. If I say hello, I'm going to say hello. Isabel, can you say hello? Hello. No, in your mother tongue. Oh, ciao. Ciao. And uh, Koji, you're there? Yes, I'm here. Can you say hello in your mother tongue? Konnichiwa. Thank you. And... Uh, Someone else that is different, say hello in your own mother tongue. Namaste. 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 There you go. You see, so if I told you to greet someone and you don't know English as a common language, but you have your own language, the action of greetings is completely different based on what your attribute is, what your language is. So my greeting asking me to greet, I'm going to say, but because that's my 
greeting in in Farsi. And if someone else, I don't know, in it, in Arabic probably says "Assalamu alaikum." I don't know if I actually said it right or not, but I apologize <laughs> if I if I said it wrong in Arabic. But whatever. So it, I think it means uh, hello to you or something. But yeah. So any person and ciao in Italian and bonjour in in uh, uh, for good day in 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 uh, in uh, in French. So different cultures do greetings in different ways based on their attribute. So the action of greeting based on how the package is coming will be different. Do we understand this? So this action is actually putting the data and behavior together, which means each behavior of an object is responsible for its own data and no one else's and therefore you change the attribute of so you have a person you make the person French and it becomes bonjour you make the person Italian it becomes ciao uh, is it only ciao or is something else too ciao I think it's for both is hello and goodbye right there's a couple of them Okay. I just always say ciao. <laughs> say ciao. Okay, it's the easiest one. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. So, again, so you change the person's uh, culture and language and the greeting changes automatically. You don't have to modify the greeting because the data and behavior are packed together. That's the first thing we have done. The second thing is that if I have Isabella in front of me and I look at her face, I can't say she's Italian. Can I? She could be from any other part of the world. I don't know. If I look somebody, I cannot say like, I can guess kind of like when people look at me and says, are you like, I, I seriously, I, I have got so many different things. I've been Greek. I've been Italian. I've been, uh, I've been, uh, uh, African. They said, are you from Egypt? Uh, I, like nobody ever told me that, are you Iranian? <laughs> nobody ever told you are, you are you originally from Iran okay nobody told me okay and eventually you, you say are you Canadian that's the easiest thing you say because you can be anything it's kind of a, a multicultural thing but what I'm saying is that by looking at someone's face you cannot actually see what it is until you actually interact with them and then everything comes out and that is privacy so we need to give privacy to people you got you got to ask what is your religion what i don't want to tell you because it's my right and i want to keep it to myself and it's none of your business it's, why because it's a private thing you want to keep it to yourself this is what's going on with privacy that we need to have so the first thing that we had was packing the data and behavior together the second thing that we had <clears throat> was privacy and uh um and we had the greeting that what the greeting could happen in many different ways and also there are some interesting stuff that are happening with actions in real world uh, what is the primary thing that an airplane does it flies right so it's a very distinguished thing about an airplane that it flies correct are we okay with this that an airplane flies okay now if i told you a pigeon flies so a pigeon flies too airplane flies too so i have the action of fly in a pigeon that goes like this an action of an airplane that flies so they both fly but in a different way so if i want to actually think of an action of flying is the flying happens in the exact same way in all flying objects does it Francis says yes really you think a mosquito flies like a jet airplane Miss Clear, <laughs> <laughs> okay. so they don't the action so the fact that an action has a meaning but it could appear in many different ways is one of the very obvious features of an object-oriented world. And that's the second thing we need to know. Not only the data and behavior is together, but the same action can happen differently in different types of objects and things. Same action can happen in a different way. Okay? And the third thing that we have, if I told you I have a car, 
Do you know what type of a car I have? No. If I told you I have a Honda, you know I have a car. No, do you know I have a car? If I say Honda, no. I have to say, well, you say, what is your car? I'm going to say Honda. But still, it's not enough. I have to actually keep going ahead and tell you what is the model of my Honda so you know actually what car I have. The fact that I can categorize objects into a hierarchy of uh, design, that's something very important. I'm a mammal. A dog is a mammal, I'm a mammal, cow is a mammal, monkey is a mammal. We are all categorized into one thing. If you believe in evolution, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and also, you categorize everything in your real world. I'm going to say, I want to write. You're going to say, give me a... So, a writing device. It could be a pen, it could be a pencil. But they all work the same way, but they are different objects doing the same thing. They all are part of the same category. One accepts ink inside, the other one has a rolling head, the other one has a lead inside, but they all do the action of writing. This reuse of design, so if I told you what is a motorcycle, to somebody who have never seen a motorcycle before, but they have a bicycle, what is your explanation to that person? I'm asking you, turn on your microphone. So. You it's don't a bike know. With a motor attached to it. Yes, it's a bicycle with a motor attached to it. Thank you. So if I have a bicycle with a motor attached to it, I have a motorcycle. So what did you use? You use another already existing design and you built a new design upon it. So essentially you inherited all the features of a bicycle. You removed all the pieces that you need, like that rotating pedal and stuff like that. You put an engine on it, you put a gas handle on it, you put a brake and stuff like that, and your, your bicycle is suddenly a motorcycle. You don't have to reinvent everything to tell it's going to be two wheels standing like this. No, it's exactly a bicycle with an engine. This action is called inheritance that we need to have in our program so our program has one of the features of being object-oriented inheritance which means I have an already existing design I grab that design modify it make it better so it's better suited to my <clears throat> model and I reuse design that's inheritance second thing I should put data and behavior together so when I request the behavior the behavior will be based on the data of my object this is packing the data and behavior together this is called in encapsulation. You encapsulate, put things in capsule. Encapsulation, putting things together. And the third thing that we have, mosquito flies, jet airplane flies. You have actions that are essentially same, but they happen in a different way. We call this something with many shapes. Actions can happen with many shapes. Many, poly, shape, morph. It's poly morphic. So, three things you need to have to have an object-oriented world. Actually, there's a fourth one and I'm not gonna, I'm gonna explain later. So, number one, inheritance. Number two, encapsulation. Number three, polymorphism. You put them all together, we call it synergy, synergy of all these three. So, these three, three things work with each other with a nice design, then you have an object-oriented program. I don't care how it's implemented, but I hope that you understand. In C language, when you say print items, you had a function that has to go get something from somewhere, bring everything together and show item. It was not a grocery store. It's a grocery store, show your items. You didn't have something like that. You had to write a function and you had to pass things to it. A function didn't belong to an object. An object was passed to a function. You did that in C. In C++, we learn we're not going to do that anymore. Okay? So, do you understand what an object-oriented program is? All right. Now that we know what an object-oriented program is, the very first thing that we need to do is to be able to put all these things nicely in a module. So we have to get used to organizing things because soon you're going to learn about objects. 
and the applications are growing so big. You're going to look at your project. When the project comes up, you can't believe at the end of the semester that you did that. When you look at the project, in an object-oriented world, it's easy to build things because every single thing is an object. It's like you are a manager of a company. When you think about it, like think about Elon Musk right now. A single individual built this multi-billion dollar uh, empire. Do you think he did it all by himself? No, he hired objects. He hired things that they were expert in what they were doing. It just placed them properly together and it happened. That's what an object-oriented world is. You, you get objects that they, you design objects that they know exactly what they are supposed to do. You put them together and you make them shoo, do their work. You have a restaurant, you hire a waiter, you hire a chef, you build a proper environment, you, ha you um, I don't know, put tables and stuff, you uh, have a person who writes down the orders, you have a cashier and things like that. You put them together and you say, start working. Your restaurant comes to function. You don't cook, you don't wait, you don't get the money, you are just over there managing things and a restaurant happens. That's what an object-oriented world is, and that's what your project's going to be. You're going to see at the end you are writing a fully functional project that is doing actually something. When, when you look back on all what you have done, you're going to see thousands of lines of code, and you put them together, and everything is working perfectly. Why? Because it's an object-oriented thing, and you could put things in small modules and design them separately not thinking about anything else. And this is the most important aspect of programming, to be able to focus on something and ignore everything else. My question is, what do you think is the, like, does anybody know, have everybody looked at the art, that you look at the art and you see there is a triangle with three eyes and five noses, and you're gonna say, what the heck is that? And somebody says, that's a person is, that is very observative, in my view. Somebody who has three eyes and five noses. What do you call that type of art? Do you know what you call that type of art? The art that you look at the art, you don't understand. And you say, what the heck is this? Is that's, thank you, that's an abstract art. Abstract art. Why that's an abstract art? An abstract art is an art when you look at it you see the painter's point of view of things and nothing else picasso did that right um i don't know uh, as, anyway so abstract art is when you look at a picture and somebody looked at something and drew only the pieces and parts that that person wanted from that art and that ladies and gentlemen is called abstract art. For you to become a good programmer, you need to be able to do abstraction. What is abstraction? Looking at the model of what you want to simulate in a computer, pick up the parts that you want, ignore the rest. If you don't do that, you will never be able to write a program because every single thing that you look is so complicated in real world that it's virtually impossible to bring it to the computer. To bring it to the computer, you have to have abstraction. So what is abstraction? Looking at a problem, focus on what is needed, ignoring the rest. Focus on what is needed, ignore the rest. Do we understand what abstraction is? Oh, I put it, uh, sorry. Do we understand what abstraction is? Good. So I'm going to add that to the list of uh, questions that we have. So we need to know what polymorphism is. What out? Uh, in, like, so I'm going to say OOP, OO, abstraction. So these are the questions that you're going to have in your first quiz, I guess. All right. Um, so that's that. Uh, I think we're good. So this is the beginning of, of everything. So now I have a program in here, as you see. So actually, for this program, I'm going to actually, um, yeah, I'm going to modularize my program over here and see what happens. So the program that I have over here, as you see, uh, is going to, uh, it has lots of pieces and parts, and I want to just 
modularize them and put them together in different modules so I don't get confused so what I need to do over here and I when I look at it I see some of the stuff that I have is just dealing with input and output so if that's the case a module essentially uh, will get uh, um, information uh, that is only focusing on one thing so if I want to do that for each module in our subject so this is uh, something that you need to know each module in our subject has two parts it has a code part and it has a header file so you need to have a header file and we're going to add a header file so we're going to create a, a new module and this module I'm going to say new item so we've got to create over here um, I'm going to say code and in here I'm going to say IO tools dot <clears throat> H that's a header file and then I'm going to add an item in the source file and I'm going to call it IO tools dot CPP for now remember we are not doing any C everything's going to be CPP so it's going to be CPP so I have a header file that I want to put these things in so what I'll do I'll go in my code and I'm gonna grab the pieces and parts that are needed for input and output and I'm gonna put it all in this one so I'm gonna go to IO tools of H of mine and I'm gonna bring only the parts and pieces that are handling IO stuff and I put all their prototypes in there do you remember what a prototype of a function is from C language and if you don't remember, remember on, uh, did we talk about, did we talk about uh, the review session for IPC in this class? Did I talk about the review session of IPC in this class? No, but I think it's on Sunday, right? Okay. Oh, somebody's trying to tell me that I have a package that has illegal stuff in it and I have to. <laughs> it's amazing. All these prank calls, this um, uh, phishing calls. Anyway, so. <clears throat> Uh, we have a, uh, a review session that is going to be so what you need to do is to go to the so in um, uh, let me ask you ah, what am I doing what am I doing so go to here which is essentially the repository GitHub really. class notes and material. You see this class notes and material. Click over here. It's going to take you to the OP244 NBB. And if you look at it at the top, I say IPC144 review session for OP244 students to review the session. Yada yada. We head on Sunday. Yada yada. The session open and click here to join. 10 o'clock in the morning on on Sunday. I'm going to start it. Okay, January 16th, three days from now. Grab a coffee if you have a job on Sunday take that day off make sure you sleep the night before it's gonna be a seven-hour session we're gonna to sit together go through IPC 144 a crash course from the beginning to the end okay so I want everybody I when I'm talking about polymorphism I don't want you to think how did that for loop work what is that if statement I don't want that thing okay so please join here I'm gonna take you through IPC 144 in seven hours will you be able to join that session Okay, for those people who cannot join, and I see some people are saying no, um, uh, their recording will be available, but please, because of recording being available, don't say I'm not going to come. Okay? Uh, please be there so we can actually uh, uh, do something. And let me see something is a public chat. I don't know how many hours going to be. I said st we'll start at 10 a.m. And as long as it takes, if it goes up to 12 o'clock at night, I'll go up to 12 o'clock at night. I don't care. Okay. And you're going to answer my wife later on. Why did I lose that Sunday? Okay. Uh, so hopefully we're okay. I, I know I'm, it's not a sacrifice for me to uh, uh, lose my Sunday, but uh, it's a good idea, I think, for the students to actually be there. So uh, please try to be there. Please try to be there. Please try to be there. All right. 
So that's this, that. This is probably something extra you're doing for us. So I really appreciate that you're doing that. If oh, there's no this. problem. It, it's it's going to help me because seriously, when I'm, I'm very passionate about teaching. When I want to teach something and I see somebody's dozed off because they are trying to grasp what happened in it, inside what I want to talk about outside of it, that's really sad. So I don't want that to happen. And um, it's my job. Don't say thank you. Anyways, so have that one. So remember that one. And I have to actually send an email. So it sends it. They send them to all I to all P two four four students if they want to join. Um, anyways, so what do we have here? Yeah. So I'll put all the prototypes of the of the class in here. What is prototype? Prototype of sorry, prototype of the function. Prototype of a function is the introduction of the function. Isabel, when I say hello, I'm Farad. You say hello, I'm Isabel, right? Right. The reason you said no, I'm I'm talking to you. <laughs> I oh. Okay. Because because I said what is a prototype? Do you remember? You said no. Okay. So. This is exactly introduction of a function. So essentially, by putting these things at the beginning of all the programs, I'm telling to the compiler, Mr. Compiler or Mrs. Compiler, these functions are available. Be aware of it. So compiler is going to say, oh, OK. So if anybody calls these functions, I'll assume they exist. And that's what is going to happen. So <clears throat> and uh, if they don't already exist later on, that's uh, when the runtime error happens. But in here, uh, sorry, the linker error, but uh, <clears throat> this essentially is telling to the compiler, relax, the functions are there, don't worry about it. Because we are writing it in separate modules, each module is a file of its own, and compiler runs separately on functions. So one function gets compiled first, done, the next, sorry, one uh, file gets compiled, done, the next file gets compiled, done, the next file gets compiled, done, the final file gets compiled, done, then the linker puts them all together, that's where you have your executable. Because of that, the compiler compiles one file that is using functions of another file. It has to trust you that the functions exist. That's what the prototypes are for, to actually tell to the compiler, hey, the functions are somewhere else, wait for them, it's going to come. Okay, so I'll put the functions for tools over here, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually put all the, uh, uh, what should we call it, the, uh, the function uh, bodies inside uh, the C file the CPP file. So essentially the CPP file is going to be there and it looks at it says, oh, I don't understand what are these things. That's where all the header files are going to come in. So essentially I have to mention the get character is in the uh, C standard input output. So I'm going to say over here include, include stdio stdio.h stdio.h that's what you had in c language correct not anymore in c++ anything that comes from the standard c library goes like that we do not have .h anymore c++ no more .h remove that and add a c at the beginning so it is c standard input output library okay <clears throat> and then uh, obviously because i don't want warnings to come from the computer uh, from the compiler, I'm going to add that defined statement at the top. And then in here, because there are some of these things that are used in here, for example, the keyboard flush is used in yes, but the keyboard flush is up here. I have to bring the prototypes over here too. So I'm going to say include, but this one is with double code. I'm going to say iotools.h. And therefore, all the prototypes of iOS iotools is going to get included in here. And therefore, it's going to be recognized. Are we okay down to here? Now you will see in object oriented uh, in, in the programs that you're going to write in future that you're going to have so many stuff all over the place that like, for example, think about it for a second. Think that we are in a company and that company have five different departments, the accounting, the what should we call it? Um, human resources and so on and so forth. And each one have its own programming department. So the accounting place wants to get the name of this, the, 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 the employee. So they have a get string for that to get the name of the employee. And the human resources 
they have their own get string. So we have two functions get string, exactly the same name, doing the same thing, but and everything's the same. If I have two functions exactly the same, I'm gonna get problem. Polymorphism was two functions with the same name that do different things, but these are two functions, same name, doing the same thing. So we're gonna be in trouble. Because of that fact, they say it in, o, in, 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 in C++ or any object-oriented program that you have, is that we're going to have a space for name for each department, each section. And each section will have a nest space for their own names. So, because of that, from now on till the end of your life of, OOP, of C++ programming, you're going to write your code in a namespace. Okay, to make sure it's not going to collide accidentally with an already existing function with the same name. So what do we do? We put everything we have now in our school, because we are in a school of SDDS, that's what we're going to do. All the code we write will go in the namespace SDDS. Remember, so anything you do will be in namespace SDDS. Put it in that one. And there you go. And then in my header file, I have to do the same thing. The good thing about namespaces is that if two namespaces with the same name collide, there is no, uh, there is no collision. Actually, they are going to merge. So unlike structures or functions and things like that, when two namespaces have same names, it's designed that they merge and they make a bigger namespace. So you can have SDDS in your header file, in your CPP file, and anywhere else that you're writing the program. So if there is another namespace, it's not going to collide. So when they did this long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, they actually uh, got the C language and they came to C++, they said, wait a minute, so all the old stuff that I have, the standard stuff that I have in the language, to make sure if somebody creates the same thing with a similar name, I don't want it to collide with the standard stuff that we have in C++. What do we do? They put all the standard C, C stuff in a namespace called STD. So if you are using it, you have to actually mention that I'm using it. So in here, when I'm actually using all this stuff from the standard thing, I have to mention it. So I have to say over here, using namespace STD. So using namespace STD, it means you don't want to keep saying STD get care. It's STD. So I don't want to say STD scanf. I don't want to say STD printf. That's tiresome. Instead of doing that at the top, I'm just going to say, hey, I am using the standard namespace. If you find a function that you can't find it, look at that uh, namespace. And there you go. That's using standard namespace STD. In here, um, I have the header file and everything looks good. Uh, what else I need to talk about in this header file is... Uh, the problem that I have in my program. So this program, I'm going to save it as non-modular. So I'm going to say non-modular.cpp. So that's the non-modular.cpp program. Let's save it over there and go to modular program of mine. So in here, what I want in my modular program that I have is to actually be able to uh, uh, use all the stuff that I have in the other one. So what I need, what do I need to do if I want to actually run this? Um, how do I actually create a main for this? So all I need to do is to have the main function. So I'm going to take all these things away. And the structure and everything is going to be gone. I don't want them. And file pointer stuff like that there are no need for them i don't want them um, what i need over here is to add the tools and stuff that i have so i'm going to say over here io tools include <coughs> io tools .h, and because io tools .h is implementing the sdds namespace obviously in here i have to use it <clears throat> because it's the main that is using my function, so I'm going to say using namespace std. 
the menu function I'm gonna let it be here because it's actually part of this and the rest I'm gonna remove so I'm not gonna have any of these things in here so my main will only be where is my menu it was in my menu by any chance menu 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 seriously oh there you go that's my menu all right and the rest of them all gone so this will become my main very clean type of thing I have IO tools that I included I have using namespace STD for the I standard input output if actually let's see if I need it or not I don't know if I need if I need it I put it but anyways in IO tools I'm doing SDDS so I'm gonna say using namespace SDDS so that is created over there these things I don't need it I'm gonna remove it uh, always having these things over here so that's like looks okay to with me actually okay and uh, sddio.h will change to csdio string.h if I need it I don't know if I do it or not I'm gonna change it to c string I don't know if I need it in here or not you include a function uh, uh, a header file only where you are using it am I using it in printf printf sort items printf load items no I'm not using it I don't need C string in here that's it anyways so that's it okay so that's my IO tools and they're gonna be used over here if needed and probably yeah the get limit is used in here so that's why it's gonna use it and the rest of the stuff they're all about item so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna create another one over here add new item and I'm gonna call it item.h item.h that's my header file for item and I'm gonna create item.cpp item.cpp that's my uh, code for the uh, functions uh, for the for item and I'm gonna go in my item.h I'm gonna put all the I'm gonna put all the uh, uh, functions that I need for the for the item so these are all the functions I had a structure that had item in it so that structure will be copied over here too okay we don't use define statement anymore instead of unless you you know what a define statement is have you ever written a program uh, sorry uh, an, uh, um, uh, 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 say a letter to some somebody talking about someone else that you don't know and you kept saying he did this he did that I uh, he uh, his this was this and you keep going through that one and then at the end you find out oh my god it wasn't the he it was a she I didn't know the name so you search and replace for all the he's and change it to she you change then replace all the his and change it to her and go like that defined statements are literally change and replace so when we had it in the previous one where you actually had uh, something over here that you changed and replaced you had a defined statement and in your defined statement you actually had something like this when you had something like this so you, you're actually telling to your compiler before compiling the code go search for all the taxes and replace them to this change all the max items and replace to that we don't do that anymore we don't like search and replace unless we really have to instead of doing that we rather create what we call constant items okay they're not a variable anymore because they don't vary they call it constant variables too so essentially what we do instead of actually creating uh, uh, search and replace we actually create constant variables so we're gonna call it constant double tax is this constant integer max item is that it works the same way but the difference is that tax is not just a text to replace it actually becomes a double value item that is not changeable it's constant and that's what we're gonna add over here so instead of that defined statement I'll put a constant value over there the structure definition is up there for everyone to use and it looks okay so I have all the good stuff in here and I have anything in here that I want to any header file in here do you see anything in here that is being used anywhere include is needed in here I don't see anything item nothing is in here okay good so we're gonna just leave it as this
and then I'm going to go to my item.cpp and in my item.cpp what I'm going to have will be all the <coughs> functions that I actually use for my item. So I'll put all the functions in here and as usual because I am programming this I have to make sure that all the things that I have is actually in the namespace sdds. So I'll put everything in namespace sdds and I'm gonna make sure that I have everything over here in namespace sdds too. Namespace sdds and also to actually uh, make sure that all the functions know each other I'm gonna include <coughs> uh, item.h I don't need to say using namespace SCDS because I'm creating it in here but in here I have printf and stuff therefore because I have printf and stuff in here uh, I need to be able to actually say I have to include the standard input output so in here I will say <coughs> uh, include CSTDIO and I'll make sure that I am using namespace STD because all the standard library stuff <coughs> are in the uh, namespace STD so they are all used um, what else I need to have over here now uh, let me see Because I am doing scanf and stuff, I have to dampen the the warning, so I'll add that one. Also, in here, I am going to have some string compare that are a string header file, so I'll that one. I'll add that one too. Include C string. So C string is added. What else do I need? So C string is added over here. Uh, oh, I need the tools because I do uh, I do get string because I do get string. I need the tools over here, so I'm gonna include include I/O tools. I don't need to include the namespace in I/O tools SDDS because I am doing the same thing. Remember, all the code you have written, you are writing, will be namespace SDDS. You don't need to use it unless you are in main. If you are in main, you need to use it. And let's include item in here, by the way. Include item.h. And now things are getting right. The only problem over here is fptr. That is the file pointer that I have that I need to add and to, to open the file. But that one has to be here because I have fptr. So let's put that fptr over here. So fptr over here. So what I will do, I will add that fptr global variable in here. So that's the file that I have, fptr. So I have fptr over here. Now, the global variable that, that what comes up right now is the news for you because because you thought that whatever you write outside of all functions at the top are global variables, correct? Do you, uh, did they tell you that in IPC? Joey, so what did they tell you? We, uh, we really never talked about public and private variables. Besides, no, like, no, I not mean, public. Like, I said global. Oh, global. Okay. Global variable uh, is a variable that you write outside of the functions up there in your program so it can be used everywhere in your functions. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, yeah. That's a global variable. That. Okay, so we have that one. But now, n writing a modular program, we realize that global variables are not really global. They have a file scope, which means they are visible in this file. In this PRG, that is not visible. Problem is that if I actually bling that definition inside the header file of item.h and add it in here, if I actually do it like this, bring it in here, because 
include is nothing but copy and paste essentially all this information are gonna if I actually put it in here all this information is gonna get copied in prg.cpp therefore when this is included the information is copied in here because it's copied in here this file will have this prg.cpp will have an fptr variable and the item.cpp will have an fptr variable therefore there are going to be two different variables in two different files so it's not going to work out like functions i need to be able to put a prototype for a variable to tell to the compiler the variable is in another file wait for it it's going to come how do we write a prototype for a for a variable this is how it's done so if you want to write a prototype for a variable you don't initialize it you just write the the variable because you wanted to tell it it is somewhere else if you want to actually want to tell something is outside you write over here extern so by writing extern this becomes a prototype for the fptr variable variable in item module module that is a, actually item.cpp so therefore any place this header file is included the access for it will be granted to item.cpp essentially it tells to that one wait for it fptr is going to come it's in another file so when actually this is being compiled now it actually recognizes what fptr is and it's not going to complain because the prototype is in item.h are we okay with this when i push all these files to the repository go and actually walk through it and see how it works out so you, to actually see how it's going to work so <clears throat> now i have the prg.cpp created i have the header files over here done as you see everything looks good um, file.cpp so on and so forth there is only one problem in here the problem is that because header files can be included everywhere it's very possible that somebody although they are not supposed to they include a header file inside another header file some guy who is not professional it's po it's possible that by mistake they say hey I am writing this to and and in future I'm gonna use IO tools by mistake they include it in here they include it in here so they they write IO tools in here you're not supposed to the header file is supposed to be included only where it's used and by the way I need to include CSDDIO because there is a file in here so I have to include include CSTDIO and using name oh you don't use a namespace in in stdio you have to actually say std something like that okay so yeah so um you'll find out later on what it is in a header file you're not supposed to use that's a wrong thing <clears throat> but anyways i have this over here uh and uh so now that i have this over here and i created it because IO tools is included in item.h when I go to item.cpp item.h is added IO tools is added too <clears throat> because I forgot I added it over here so I have the include included twice because of that by mistake I'm gonna have two prototypes for keyboard flush two prototypes for this and that's error to prevent that you can actually tell to compiler to compile this only once how do you do that you add a phrase at the top for now just use this memorize the pattern and use it blindly until you understand it perfectly this is what you do you say <clears throat> so when you are doing a number sign it means you're talking to the compiler this is not C program anymore so you're actually telling to the compiler if not defined if not defined you put the namespace stds this is how you create the name then you put the header file name io tools all capital underline h okay you do that and then you copy that 
and in the second line you define it and at the end you're gonna have an end if so you are saying to the compiler if this thing is not defined compile this code if it's defined don't but the very first thing that you are doing in the next line is defining it so the first time iOS tools is compiled it checks this is the first time this is not defined it will get compiled the second time it's being defined uh, included it is not going to compile anymore because the defined value it's already defined so to demonstrate that for you I'm gonna remove this because it's not right to add it in here but I'm gonna do it on purpose over here so I'm gonna say IO tools include five times and in here I'm gonna say item five times this is gonna be error because I don't have the safeguards so I have to say add the safeguards for item two so I'm gonna actually do that again it's gonna be the same way I'm gonna say if not define SDS item and in here I'm gonna say end if and that guarantees that this item no many times no matter how many times I include it it's gonna just get uh, compiled only once and then if I compile the whole code hopefully it's gonna work and if it doesn't we'll fix it rebuild what does it say name on reference to call variable oh there we go it says that the name is not initialized to anything it's a, a warning that is giving us um, so you can simply initialize it to something to just make it not nag so we rebuild again rebuild and it appears that everything's gonna be everything's okay so if I run the program it runs it as a module as you see but still works and it doesn't matter if I inc included the the header file 50 times over here because the first time it is compiled it comes over here it defines the value the second time that it's gonna get compiled it actually stops it and it's not gonna uh, do it anymore uh, do we understand it so this is essentially the point these are the points that you really need to remember okay you include only if needed include only if needed okay never do just in case includes ever never do a just in case include never ever okay don't say I'm just gonna include it just in case don't do that see if it's needed I had this file because it's defined in stdio I had to put it over there otherwise I wouldn't have okay and the same thing over here if I actually go in my tools I don't have anything in here nothing is included because I don't have any anything used in here but when I actually go to iotools.cpp then I'm gonna include all the stuff that I need the scanf of course it's gonna say it's not safe you're doing it but it's okay uh, and all the things uh, that is that is used in here I'm just gonna include it and this is how you actually convert something from a non modular way to a module way and if you learn how to do this modular stuff later on creating objects in an object-oriented uh, program is gonna be much easier are we okay with this so is there more of a purpose behind the if not defined defined other than saving yourself if you make a mistake by including it too much it's or that's saving yourself it's inevitable a header file is going to include it several times not by mistake but by design okay because it is impossible for 50 programmers to know what is included where if they are using a function of a header file they'll include it and if it's redone in three different things when they are put together without knowing five header files are going to get included I'll give you the example right now take a look <clears throat> I am including CSDDIO because file is in here correct yep okay and if I come right now in PRG.CPP I am including CSDDIO because it's used over here correct yeah so if CSDDIO did not have that safeguard I would have gotten an error 
Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so <clears throat> this is a must. So at any time, so say I'm writing a, pro, a, a header file. I'm going to say add new item, and the header file is for whatever. Let's say, let's say student. So I'm creating a student.header file. As soon as you do this, without thought, blindly, immediately you have to say, if not define SDDS student header file, and then you copy that. Don't retype it so you don't make a mistake. You say define, you say namespace SDDS. That's a blank header file. Then you start coding. So a blank header file is a header file with these information in it. Never create a header file as I did before because I was teaching it. Okay, so a blank header file, it's actually a good question if I told you, uh, create a blank header file for this item. I'm going to give you an employee. You have to create this for me to prove that you understand what a blank header file is. Do we understand what a blank header file is now? So anytime you create a header file, blindly you do this, and then you think, what am I supposed to put in this thing? Always. This is an important thing. Okay? And those people who are not replying to more... Uh, pardon me? Always safeguarded. Always safeguarded. There is no exception about it. Okay. There is something that you will see that is in C++ that is called Pragma 1. Pragma yes, 1. Pragma 1. There is something like this that is essentially this in a nutshell. Don't trust it. Have your uh, have your uh, uh, own safeguard created to make sure it's backwards compatible. Okay? So if you okay, see there is, so if I actually create a header file, if I actually ask over here, add new item, and I create a header file, and I call over here, say, employee.h, because it's a header file, it's going to add Pragma 1 automatically. You see that? Don't trust it. Do the header, f do the uh, safeguard of your own. Okay. All right. Are we all okay? Yes. All right. Now your responsibility, ladies and gentlemen, is to fill in the blanks. I will never be able to cover everything that is supposed to be covered that week week. So it's your responsibility to go to weekly the schedule, take a look at the first week, go through every single thing that are in these three things. The quiz is going to be on all of them. I will never be able to cover everything. There are going to be always holes that you have to fill yourself. You're a student of a college. It's not high school. It's not primary school. You are supposed to seek the information yourself. Okay. Now, Remember, so you got to go through all these things, make sure you understand everything. Quiz is going to be on all of those things. And then a couple of questions that are going to come from here, but only concept, no coding. So you have to study all these two weeks before the quiz you're coming the next day, first session of this week. There will be no announcement for it. Quiz will be always the first thing that you're coming in, unless I tell you otherwise. Are we okay with this? Thank you very much, everyone. Have yourself a wonderful, beautiful day, and we are going to see you soon. Any questions before we leave? So, uh, goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye, everyone. Remember, those people who have to wear makeup. Thank you. Thank you. All those people who are supposed to fix their rooms and stuff like that to turn on their video when they're going to talk at the beginning of the session, please do it. You're going to talk. Have a beautiful day. Bye bye.